هدف الاصلاح For a week and a half now the streets of Lebanon have been jammed with protesters the biggest anti-government demonstrations there for 15 years Among the aspects of this story that stand out although it has since grown into a nationwide movement against government corruption and economic mismanagement these protests were triggered by talk of a new tax on WhatsApp and other internet call services like Facebook Messenger and FaceTime secondly While so much of Lebanese politics is sectarian, there is nothing factional about these demonstrations. The issues are economic. The protesters are a non-sectarian coalition. Not that you would know that, watching some of the television channels coming out of Beirut. Unlike the movement they are supposed to be covering, much of Lebanon's media is split along sectarian lines. Some of the more independent outlets have jumped on this story, but those controlled by politicians have been spinning, downplaying, or just ignoring the unrest. That's what happens when the media play a central part in a system that so many citizens are trying to change. Our starting point this week is Beirut. Watching television in Lebanon these days, on some channels at least, is like watching a nation talking to itself. Channels like LBC and MTV and Al Jadid are just running constantly on the interviews of the crowd, basically telling the crowd to just speak. They talk about what happened to their family, they talk about their story. These reporters, they stand there and people just swarm around them and wait for their turn. Talking about small issues, uh, local issues, to bigger issues like, you know, having a sectarian political system driven by warlords. It is that system the protesters are out to change. But it was economic issues, power outages, water shortages, and proposed new taxes on basics, like fuel, wheat, even online phone calls on platforms such as WhatsApp, that first brought people onto the streets, which is where the domestic media come in with their built-in biases. Lebanese politics and power are carved up between political factions. The president comes from a Christian party. The prime minister's office is reserved for a Sunni Muslim, and a Shia Muslim always gets to be speaker of the parliament. Some of Lebanon's biggest TV channels, OTV, Future TV, and NBN, are owned by or aligned with those political parties. Then there's Hezbollah's Al Manar TV and the state-owned channel Tele Liban, both of which downplayed the demonstrations or ignored them. Activists stormed Tali Liban's offices in protest. Three other privately owned channels, apparently with agendas of their own, LBC, MTV and Al Jadid, have all provided wall-to-wall -wall coverage of the unrest. The media landscape in Lebanon is monopolized by a handful of political dynasties. About 12 families own or control the entire mainstream media landscape. OTV, which is affiliated to the President's Party, on the very first night of the demonstrations, OTV was broadcasting a cooking show. OTV reporters on the ground have been forced to remove their logos from their microphones uh, because protesters have simply refused to speak to them. Every single media, every single newspaper has a particular political slant. So it comes as no surprise that OTV that is facing the brunt of the insults would not want to be broadcasting the protest with as much fervor as MTV and Al Jadid that are on the other side politically. When we look at media, we need to understand that live television is one of the cheapest forms of media. And so the majority of the stations, with the exception of Tele Liban, is out broadcasting live. The channel called NBN, which is tied to the Speaker of Parliament, Nabih Barri, also one of Lebanon's most powerful figures. This channel has no reporters on the ground. They just are putting a shot of the crowd. And whenever they hear a protest chant they don't like, they actually mute the sound of the entire broadcast. So it's hilarious to just turn on a channel 
And it's really, they're speechless. These channels are literally speechless. NBN and OTV and others, and El Manar, they're trying to direct uh, what's happening. So they constantly have pundits on air, um, and they kind of dip in and out of the protest very strategically. Despite their best efforts, they still can't really control and direct the crowd. But they're trying very hard to do so. Spare a thought for Lebanon's Prime Minister, Saad Hariri. Future TV, a channel his family controls, suspended operations last month due to financial difficulties. Hariri must feel like he's at a political gunfight, a factional free-for-all, having been suddenly disarmed of his own channel. Given all the criticism OTV has been taking for its coverage, we asked for an interview. We were told that an official at the Free Patriotic Movement, President Michel Aoun's party, could speak for the channel. That official defended OTV's journalism and directed our attention elsewhere to the coverage on LBC, MTV and Al Jadid. OTV is covering the demonstrations, is taking the pulse of the street, they are sending their reporters sometimes to hostile uh, surroundings. And these reporters are being cursed at and harassed. Because they are thought to be uh, from the government's side, which is not the case. Some of these stations was being part of the demonstrations, inciting people, whereas usually the role of the media is to just take the pulse of the street and report what is happening. Look at international TV stations. Have you seen a, a TV station in France inviting people to uh, go on manifestations with the Gilets jaunes? Uh, no, but they covered it, and this is how it should be done. We looked for examples of what Haddad just described, channels inciting citizens to join the demonstrations. Although we found none, Al Jadid has tweeted out videos of Lebanese celebrities urging the channel's followers to go out on the streets. And some of those channels' reporters have lost or at least parked their objectivity on this story. <laughs> Al Jadid correspondent. Halima Tabia, for example, went viral after helping a protester escape arrest while she was live on the air. As she was talking to another demonstrator, uh, a young man was seen being pulled out of the crowd uh, by assumingly security forces in civilian clothing. What she said at the time was that she had seen this young man distributing food to other demonstrators throughout the day and that she had, she had a duty to stand on his side. <laughs> I think it was a commendable moment. Um, as journalists who are often uh, pushed towards this um, creed of objectivity, we are asked to be uh, neutral. But in reality, journalism should be a service in the public interest. And this is precisely what she did. And I think this is precisely why this moment went viral. The prevailing distrust Lebanese have in their mainstream media has led them to lean on social media to share information. But unlike the Arab Spring, and regardless of the WhatsApp angle, this is no Facebook revolution. In some ways, it's bigger than that. Millions of Lebanese, of all sects, are not just out to bring down a lone dictator or a mere government. They want to overthrow a system, sectarian to the core, right down to the TV channels that are supposed to be telling their story. Their basic message, regardless of what our politicians tell us, no matter how our media choose to report it, Lebanon doesn't have to be this way. What is critically missed on the media side of the Lebanese protest is strong and effective dialogue with the alternative political groups because there seems to be this representation that there is no alternative to the sectarian political leadership, but there is. There are numerous alternative political parties that are secular, that are equipped, that are grounded, that have legitimacy from the people, and they need to be given stronger voices in the mainstream media so that we can actually lead our country forward.